Hello everybody, welcome. Today I want to talk about backing up your FreeNAS to your Amazon S3 bucket. I've been wanting to do a proper full backup of my FreeNAS device for a really long time, but I always end up stuck well with money problems, yeah? So I have decided that I can actually go around my fear of having the data exposed in the cloud by using client-side encryption, yeah? And some of the Amazon cheaper storage tiers are very cheap, and I mean redundant here, but means that it's not gonna cost you a lot to keep a very uh, low-cost archive of your data in case your house catches fire or you lose more than one hard drive at the same time. So let's have a look at it. We're gonna be using cloud credentials right and once we manage to log into our cloud account we are going to set up cloud sync tasks and as you can see i have one running here to back up my next cloud instance to the cloud and i have it limited to one megabyte per second but i'm going to run a secondary one here quick and dirty just for you to see how the process would look like. To begin with, we need to create an account for our synchronization. So you can go to the console, you can go to services, write the authentication manager, management, identity and access management, that's what it is. You go to users. Click add user. You can call it test. And we are gonna create what the access type called programmatic access. Go to permissions. And here, initially I was hoping that when I would create a cloud sync task, I could just give access to the account to the buckets that I need. The problem is that it always seems to try to pull the bucket. So when I go to cloud credentials and I try to configure the account, the problem that I have is that even if I specify here directly the bucket by using the endpoint URL, the, the verification fails because probably I need to be able to list buckets. So for this quick introduction, I'm going to create an account that has access to all my buckets. But you should not do that in production, yeah? Here I have one user, it's only me using it, but in a shared environment, you want to be more granular than that. With that in mind, we're going to go to attach existing policies. If you look for S3, you have S3 full access. We're gonna attach this to this user. And here we have the access key and the secret access key. In Cloud Credentials, you're gonna click Add. You can call the it test, just a name that describes the account. This name is not verified during authentication, so you can use whatever you want. Provided is Amazon S3. The access key ID is the one that you found in the management console. And the secret access key is also there but hidden. Once you have pasted both the access key ID and the access key, you can click verify credential and it should show that the credential is valid. And once you save this and you close the management console, you don't have access anymore to the key, so write it somewhere safe. Or just recreate the account if you need. Now that you're here, in S3, you create a bucket, you can call it test. 
I'm not gonna copy any settings. Uh, test, 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 whatever. And I don't need versions, I don't need server access logging or any of this. I don't any public access, so no one can open my bucket using public URLs. And that's it, you can create the bucket. Now, I have the impression that since I gave my account access to all S3 buckets, I should not need to grant permissions here individually, but in case you would have to, you can come here to permissions, go to bucket policy, and then use the policy generator to grant access to your user to this bucket. What I want here is go to properties. I'm gonna go to permission and use AES256 and save it. Not sure how much difference does it make because I think Amazon has the keys, but you know, I sleep better at night. Back to FreeNAS, we have an account running. We can scroll down, go to tasks, and go to cloud sync tasks. Go to add, and I'm gonna call this task a test, and I'm actually pushing from FreeNAS to the cloud. And I'm gonna choose my test credential. Actually, before I, I get to that, I'll just quickly here create a folder test, just in case I need to, for example, change from Glacier to a restore, I can apply it to all the folder easily, instead of having to go to each object. I just don't like so much the web interface and I should start getting used to the command line, but I'm not there yet. I'm gonna go here to bucket, go to my test bucket. I'm gonna choose the folder, test. I'm gonna go to server side encryption AES256. And my storage class will be, well, ideally you would choose Deep archive because you know you only need to restore data in case you lose a hard drive or your server or anything like that. But deep archive does not allow for fast retrieval and I cannot show it to you. So for now, let's go to standard. And since it's my first copy, I don't need to sync, I just want to copy the whole thing over. And the source will be my friend's folder, I know that uh, it's quite small, so I can just choose his folder here, scroll down if it will let me, and what I want to do is, I want to enable remote encryption, the file name encryption, so I know that even someone gets access to my buckets, they cannot retrieve the data. For encryption, password and salt, can just pick a string of random characters. And for here I'm gonna just read one, two, three, four, because I'm gonna delete this just after we are done here. The schedule also doesn't matter, depending on the size of the folder and how far you change, you will want to do it daily, weekly should be enough, yeah? I'm gonna pick 80 parallel transfers because I have a lot of upstream bandwidth. Depending on the structure of the file system, how you use it, you may want to follow Simlix or not. And I'm gonna choose 10, 24, so 10 megs. Or maybe not, no bandwidth limit for now. I just want this to go fast. And I can save it. Once this is done, you get that well, the sync has not run since the last boot, and I can just start it manually 
here. I managed to click and the sync is running, so if I go here, I can see that I'm sending at around 9 megabytes and it's gonna take 6 minutes. So I'll cut this video now and get back to it once we are done. Alright, now that our upload is complete, as you can see here, the status has changed to success and you get a log of what has happened. And if you go here to S3 and go to our test folder, you're gonna see that FreeNAS has encrypted the file names, the folder names, and naturally the contents. So if I go to any folder and download a file, I can't see the content. So it's encrypted server side and it's also encrypted locally before it is sent. Now let's assume that by any chance I want to restore this folder. Yeah. If I were to go to my other bucket, I cannot retrieve this data because it's a Glacier Deep Archive. So I would need to go here, go to Actions and do Restore and make the data available again. But in this case, in our test case, I can restore it directly because I did not send it to the Glacier and that's really long-term archive storage. So what we can do is first, I don't want to restore on top of the same folder because there's my friend data is there. So I'm gonna go to storage, go to pools. I'm gonna quickly here create a new data set. I can't see the bloody button, so let me just, okay, a bit smaller. I will call it test restore. It can be all generic because I'm gonna be saving directly. I go back to tasks and cloud sync tasks. I'll create a new one. Test restore. Now I'm gonna pull data from the cloud. I'm gonna use my test S3 account, choose the test bucket, go to our test folder, AS256, I don't think the storage class matters for a restore but let's set it since the option is here and locally I'll save these two our new restore folder. It's a copy because I just want to restore the whole data. I'm now simulating that I actually lost the server, yeah? And in remote encryption, I'm gonna add our one, two, three, four encryption and, and, and salt no bandwidth limit and I'll save this task I will run it manually and we can follow the progress now the restore is complete and you can see here the log And now if we go to the terminal
you're going to see that all the files are there and they are unencrypted. So this is what you could do to reboot a, to rebuild a server in case of catastrophic catastrophic failure, and you don't have to keep running a new server in parallel just to save your data somewhere or manage tapes and so on. So it's a cost-effective way that you can leverage the cloud in a wise way and not sell your data to devil. Sending the data to another storage category in S3 would probably be cheaper because S3 Glacier charges per thousand requests and by the way this application is designed it's probably listing folders all the time although here it only mentions put but for some reason it generates 240 million requests and that was very expensive I'm hoping that now that the first synchronization is done from next month uh, onwards I'm gonna pay much less for the requests and just for the data that I'm sending there and storing. Uh, so we will see if again I have such a high bill next month, I'm gonna change the configuration and revisit this on the channel.